All right, Spurs Nation. So today we're going to be talking about DeMar DeRozan. I know, I know everyone wants him gone. Everybody wants him to just hit the road. No one wants him on the team anymore. Just be gone, DeMar DeRozan. But I'm going to play devil's advocate today. I think that it's really important to play devil's advocate when you're dealing with the San Antonio Spurs because even though we've been looking at all these different scenarios, uh, even on this channel, at the end of the day, it's a high possibility that the Spurs just decide, hey, we're just going to keep this guy, okay? And if that's the if that's the case, they're going to try to re-sign him, not do a sign and trade or anything like that. I think it's important to look at the reasons why they would do it and why it might be a good idea. So just look at five reasons, okay? Five reasons why the San Antonio Spurs should or would keep DeMar DeRozan. So let's go into the first point here. <clears throat> and the first point is familiarity okay uh and what do i mean by that well what i mean by that is that demar Derozan is familiar with the culture we're familiar with him we know what type of player he is we know where his spots are we know that he's a good playmaker for us we know that he's going to show up to work on time we know that he's in the gym 24 7 with the team we know what type of guy he is we know that he's a good guy we know that he's a spur he has at least he has the mentality of a spur okay the demeanor of a spur he fits in just fine the the team the team loves him uh patty loved him Dejounte loves playing with him we know we get we know at the end of the game especially in the regular season for the most and we'll get into some other things with demar Derozan later but we know that at the end of the games especially in regular season that we're we can depend on him for a shot and he hit quite a few big shots for us i mean Dejounte has two this past season but demar Derozan has undeniably been that guy okay so with that being said i think that that's a pretty decent reason why the spurs would keep him just you know we know what we're getting out of him so i talked a little bit about playmaking and the reason why i brought that up is because ironically enough or unironic i'm saying it's unironically but he's the best point guard we have yeah i know but he is the best point guard we have so what do i mean by that well what i mean by that is if you look at the stats here even the assist totals he's 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 averaging seven assists for us guys he's basically doing everything on the court he's averaging seven assists the john T. murray five is great Derek white we know he's been hurt uh a lot of the season you can see just 36 here right um but you know it, our other two point guards are averaging way less than him the point the fact that he's averaging nearly seven assists and he's like our shooting guard slash small forward speaks volumes of what he does for this team i mean we're not only just talking about the average points which is higher than anybody on the team um but we're also talking about the assists he's the best point guard we have so if the spurs wanted to continue to work on Dejounte murray continue to work on Derek white I mean, I, I see those guys only getting better whether he's on the team or not. So, yeah. But let's get into my next point here. Look at my boy. He looks so happy. He looks so happy. All right, let's get into the next point. The next point is we can build with him. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know everyone will say you can't build with a veteran. You can't build with somebody like DeMar DeRozan. He's not the star of the team. Or, well, he is the star of the team, but he's not uh, the guy that you build around. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you build around DeMar DeRozan, but he is the type of player that fits with us so well. He fits within the system, and his stats have shown that. And the thing about it is, if you look at other teams, even like the Phoenix Suns, not to say that he's Chris Paul, but it's blasphemy to even say that a veteran, you can't have young guys around a veteran and be successful. That's not true. Guy, a lot of people are worried about him hindering the growth of DeJounte or Derek White. And I have to tell, or Lonnie Walker, and I have to tell you guys, if these players are going to be great, they're going to be great regardless of who's on their team. It's going to show. So you don't really have to necessarily just worry about that. These guys are going to show up. It's going to happen regardless, okay? Regardless of DeMar DeRozan in the game or not. It's going to be times where he has to take a back seat. And you can build around a team when you have a veteran. And this guy isn't that old, okay? I mean, a lot of people think that he's, he is a veteran, but a lot of people think that he's like this, I don't know, ancient player. He's, he's only 31, 
I mean, some people hit their prime around 30, 31. So all I'm saying is, I think that DeMar DeRozan, you can build a team uh, with him there. You don't, you don't have to, don't build around him, obviously. <clears throat> like, I don't believe that the Suns are built around Chris Paul, you know, obviously they're not, but you can have a veteran leadership, a guy that hasn't necessarily won a championship or anything like that, but still get into significant games. It, it is possible. So let's get into my fourth reason for go ahead and grabbing them best free agent now i know i know right off the bat you're gonna say he's not the best free agent but if you look at the free agency class if i just type in nba free agents 2021 and you look at the free agents guys here i can show you if you look at the free agents demar Derozan is by far probably one of the best free agents that we could grab I mean, if you're looking at the list, Tim Hardaway, it's that would be great, but he's possibly going to Dallas, okay? Um, you know, Danny Green, Andrew, let's just keep the ones at the top. Chris Paul, I don't know if anybody really want Chris Paul. And then the, the amount of money that you probably have to pay him. And then Kawhi Leonard, I mean, we all can probably anonymously, anonymously say that we don't really want him, right? Or we probably shouldn't take him back necessarily. Um, and on top of that, you know, you got Mike Conley, you know, that's not a thing. Uh, Kyle Lowry, that's not a thing. Oh, and I apologize. DeMar DeRozan's 32, not 31. Um, apparently I thought he was 31. Uh, Odo, uh, Odo Porter, Victor Aladipo, you don't know anything about his, uh, injuries and where that's going to go. So what I'm saying is, yes, be completely honest. If we would have never got DeMar DeRozan and yes, say we traded Kawhi and we just got picks and Jakob. I just have a feeling, I, I know I know that you can't tell the future or what ifs or whatever, but I just have a feeling that a lot of Spurs fans will be saying they want DeMar DeRozan. I think that when someone's really close to home, you start having a different perspective of it. And the reason why I say that is because almost every single Spurs fan and the media was excited when the Spurs got DeMar DeRozan. Like all of us love the fact that we got DeMar DeRozan. Did DeMar DeRozan become a worse player once he got to San Antonio? No, he's kind of the same player. <laughs> I mean, he, the only thing that he's, I mean, the only thing that's different about him is that he passed the ball more, that he's more of a playmaker and that's what we needed from him. So this whole idea that the San Antonio Spurs, uh, I mean, Spurs fans wouldn't want DeMar DeRozan is it, probably not 100% true. Okay, if, if this free agency class was like this and we never had DeMar DeRozan, he would be at the top of our list. He could very well be the best free agent out there right now. I mean, just over overall, just for what we're trying to do and everything, he, he's probably the best. All right, so let's go into our next point here. All right, our next point, our next and final point, and this one's gonna be controversial, but I'm gonna try to explain myself a little bit, okay? He can get you there so what do i mean by that he can get you in a position to get to a championship he can't i mean it, it's it's undeniable that he can and what i mean by that is if you look back okay when he was with the raptors everyone talks about the 2016 eastern conference finals now i know they also talk about the sweep you know not too long uh after that a couple years later but for the most part when people talk about demar Derozan, they talk about the eastern conference finals in which he lost and people said that he was afraid of lebron and he was afraid of the big moment but if you look at st sometimes stats don't lie guys <laughs> okay and if you look at the stats it's undeniable that demar Derozan was that guy if you look at the points per game in this conference or uh not the conference in this uh in this eastern conference yeah i meant conference in the eastern conference finals you could see lebron james had 26 points you had kyrie irving at 24 and third was demar de rosa leading his team at 23 and kyle lowry at 20. another thing that you can kind of notice i don't know if you've seen it when i'm showing you on the screen right now is that when you look at lebron's team you had kyrie irving but if you look at his role players, Kevin Love on the team, 15 points. JR gave him 12. Channing Fry gave him nine. You look at DeMar DeRozan's team, they didn't give him much. I mean, after Kyle Lowry is a big drop off to seven. And then it's kind of evenly distributed. But 
I mean, Channing Fry was a better role player than any other player DeMar DeRozan had on his squad. And we know Damari Carroll, and we all dog on Damari Carroll. You being Spurs fans, you dog on Damari Carroll. And another thing that I want to point out is that even if you look at this Eastern Conference Finals and you look at the uh, field goals attempt, uh, where is that? Field goals attempted? The only two players out of these two teams that shot over or took over 100 field goal attempts is DeMar DeRozan and Kyrie. DeMar isn't afraid. He's not afraid of the big moment. It's just that his team wasn't necessarily good enough. And he can play better. He could have done better. There's plenty of times where we see DeMar and he slip up in, in, in certain moments. But at the end of the day, this whole narrative that DeMar DeRozan is booty cheeks is just not true. Not only that, you could say, well, Clan, I mean, 108 field goal attempts. Well, what was his percentage? I'm sure it was trash. It was 50%. The only thing you can harp on DeMar DeRozan for is having kind of an old school game. The fact that his three point percentage is zero, which just, I mean, he didn't, he only took four of them. <laughs> so, I mean, but that's the only thing you can really harp on him on, on. But 50%, he took 100 H. That is really impressive. Now, I think, let's see, Kyrie's, what was Kyrie's? Kyrie's was near 50%. That's impressive, guys. His was exactly 50% once shooting over 100 shots. That's impressive. He wasn't afraid of the big moment. It's just they weren't good enough. They were going against a super team. And not to mention, this Cavaliers team won a championship right after. So all I'm saying, I'm not trying to give excuses for my boy, but all I'm saying is there are reasons, and decent reasons at that, why the Spurs might want to keep him. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Uh, I love all the love that you give me. If you could become a patron, you can see the link right there. Wait, right there. Okay, become a patron. Only two dollars a month, uh, four cents a day. So if you want to just support the channel, um, please do that. Links below uh, in the description. All right, love you guys. Give what you later. Deuces.